I'm gonna address the second part of this question where the person's asking about how I handle retesting. And again, this might rub people the wrong way, but again, every classroom's different. This is something that I figured out that works for my classroom. Let's start out with my AP test. Now for this class, again, it's a advanced placement class, it's a college level class. My tests, usually their average is about a 70 to 75. I want those students to experience what it's like to get through a difficult test and for not everyone to get an A. However, after the test is done, they get two or three days to work on test corrections where they basically fill out a sheet where they have to explain why they got an answer wrong and then what the right question or right answer is and why the answer is correct. This is the multiple choice portion of the test correction sheet where they tell me why they got it wrong and then what the correct answer is and why it's correct. The back is very similar, but it's just for an FRQ question. They have to explain why they got it wrong and then what the correct you know, answer is. Now, after they complete this form, I check to make sure they did it correctly and they earn half of the points back that they missed. So if they got like a 70%, I give them 15% back to make their score like an 85%. That helps them bring up their score, so they're obviously their GPA isn't being you know killed by my class. Why I do this is again to help the students learn from their mistakes, to learn how to take a test, to look at you know why did I answer a question this way, and what was the teacher looking for? How can I improve my test taking skills? Now for my biology classes, I do something totally different. And again, a lot of teachers might not agree with this, but again, this works for my classroom. First of all, I use quizzes as my assessment for my biology students. So when I have a test, I just send out a code to all my students. They can take that test with their notes multiple times. And after, at the end like if I have a test period, what I'll do is I'll take their top score. Now, I will agree that this is not the most effective way to assess student learning. However, students that take my test using this program will take it usually multiple times They'll learn from their mistakes and they'll just study really the material. That's what I want. In the past, before COVID, I used to give paper versions of the test. I, you know, I would grade them, it would take hours. I'd give them back and students would look at their you know, test score and then just throw it out. They wouldn't actually do anything with their mistakes. When COVID came, I just used quizzes because I was just, again, so overwhelmed with how much I was changing in my classroom. And I've stuck with it because, you know, I have students that will take these quizzes eight times just to get that 100%. And you would think that a lot of students would, you know, take it multiple times to get 100%, but I still have a pretty good, I would say perfect bell curve, but there are, there is a bell curve of scores that, you know, represents pretty well what the students know. Is this the most effective way of assessing students? No, but this is what works well for my classroom.